Sure, Matt, just uh, your, your team has lacked that toughness while they're on the road most of the year. But right. What brought that out tonight from them? Uh, just our start. You know, I, I think you know for most teams, and we've talked about this at length. The start of the game, you want to get off to a good start, but you know how how much does it really matter, especially in the games you know close after the first four or five minutes? Well, with our team, it, it does matter, and um, I think that was huge. Our ability to rebound in the first half. You know, I thought we were. I thought in the first game when we played them, um, we were quicker to the basketball, and it seems to be kind of the theme for us. When we make shots, you know, we're better in other areas, and uh, I think that's probably for most people. But it's really true for this team. But I, I just thought we were quicker to the ball, and you know, and uh, got a lot of offensive rebounds, and just kept creating more opportunities for ourselves. Iowa seems to bring out the best in Boudreaux. Just talk about his play. Yeah, you know, he played well. He was very active. You know, the 14 rebounds and the seven offensive, you know, were huge for us. But, um, you know, made some shots. You know, he had some opportunities there at the end um, when we were trying to extend the lead. But, you know, I just I liked his effort. You know, I like his ability to just to stay active. And I, I think a lot of times, you know, when, you, when you're worried about some of our other bigs, you know, he can, he can get away from you, especially and block out responsibility. When did you finally feel comfortable that you had this? <laughs> um, it was at the end, you know, uh, you know, when they said not to foul. I think anytime you get in games or you, you know, you've struggled on the road. A lot of us in our league have struggled on the road just because our league's so good. Um, so you never think you, you know, you totally have it, especially with an offensive team like Iowa. You know, they can score points so quick, and um, they hung in there and made some threes there at the end. Um, but no, it was just a good team win for us. What do you think this means for NCAA tournament hopes? Well, obviously it helps us. You know, they've had a great year, and uh, they put themselves in a great position and had some great non-conference wins. They've had some great conference wins. So, anytime you can play somebody on the road and you know with the resume like Iowa, it's definitely going to help you. Just the maybe the stretch that Eric Hunter's in right now. And right. Back, the nine straight points there to give you the, the 17 point lead late. Yeah. Just what? Yeah, the, what, you know, what made about the, his game right. Yeah, now? made a big three there at the you know what we call timeout on the shot clock play and. Um, just stepped up, you know, made, made some free throws, uh, made some good decisions, uh, just played a you know, good overall game. But we definitely need him to, you know, to play that way. Obviously, in the Indiana game, he was huge too. And um, just trying to get consistent play across the board. But no, Eric had a great game for us. What has been the key for you guys against Iowa this year? Uh, obviously, you blew him out at home. Right. Well, what have you done well? Yeah. And what? You know, we didn't shoot as well in this game. But it still, it was a good game for us in, in comparison to some games that we've had on the road. I think just trying to score against them and, and trying to keep them out of transition to the best of our ability. Um, also, a little bit of luck. You know, we, we left a couple guys open, um, trying to clog things up and, and take away Garza and take away Wies Camp and um, make it hard for Frederick. And, and with that, when you give that much attention to those guys, some guys are going to be open. And if they make some open shots, you know, maybe we have to change some things. But. Um, I, I, but I really think for us is not letting them, you know, have so many opportunities in transition. You know, they're so good when they're getting to the rim and getting the early post ups and their kick ahead threes. And uh, but you got to score the ball to do that. And I think our ability to to play better offensively um, has, has really helped us against their transition. Along those lines, uh, the two games with Iowa, obviously you made things hard on Garza. He's got his numbers, but no one else has really hurt you. Right? Is that you stopping them? Like what, what's been kind of the, the key to <laughs> what's been kind of the key to He's not letting anybody else beat you? Yeah, think about all I mean. the attention we just gave him, and he has twenty six yeah. and twelve. Right. You know, just making it hard. You know, if he's going to hit contested, you know, seventeen, eighteen footers, I'd much rather him shoot perimeter shots than be on that block. Because shooting perimeter shots isn't going to get us in foul trouble. You're not going the free throw line on perimeter shots. So you know, we're not giving him that, but we, you know, we'd rather him have that than the post ups. If you just let him get post ups without doubling, he's going to wear you thin. And uh, he's just too good of a player. You know, he's got a chance to be national player of the year and speaks right. for itself. But you haven't let anybody else beat you. Has that been has that been you keeping them out of transition? Has that been good defense? I think a little bit of everything. And playing them on the right night. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's when you play people. There's there's no question about that. So but they they have a good team. And uh, you know, they're gonna cause people a lot of problems in Indianapolis and people a lot of problems in the NCAA tournament. What do you see on the on the back side on offense when you guys have the ball in the opposite wing? Seem to be a lot of openings. No Joe found some guys on yeah. the opposite block. I mean, what, what right. do you see there? Well, they were, they were just a couple of them. They were just rotating up to our guys. And when they were rotating up to our guys, we just we just tried to back cut a couple times. And No Joe made the one pass there to Evan in the first half for that. 
Um, and then they were zoning a couple, you know, they had a handful of times zoning, and they were doing a good job with our misdirection dribble. But when they were taking that away, it was kind of opening up some pockets of space and just kind of told them just to, you know, make sure they see things and come back into those, you know, little pockets of space because the center can't cover all of that. It just opens up a lot of things, whether you're in the high post or, you know, we got a couple of diagonal passes like off the left elbow to the right block, which is kind of untraditional, but that's what ended up being open. And so Sasha made a couple of good passes in the first half and OGL did also. But just trying to take what they you know, gave us. Obviously, they're going to watch tape and see some of the things that we did well the first time and take that away, and they did. And uh, our guys you know, did a good job adjusting on a couple of those possessions. Was the three by Eric out of the timeout, three on the shot clock, was that the play? That's what you guys drew up? No. Nope. That was just the last thing. We just wanted him to kind of clear space. And we, yeah, we, we missed who we were trying to get. The offensive rebounds in the first half seemed to serve kind of a dual purpose. Yeah. Not only were you getting put back some scores out of it, but it frustrated them. They couldn't get in their transition. Was that just simply about uh, – was, was it just simply about positioning, or, or do you think that effort really played a role? I think both. I think you know a lot of times we'll overdo some things on the flip of it, like with guys, and we'll double team and do stuff, and it really it makes sense to do it. Then it puts us in bad rebound balance. So that's always a, it's always the downside of how we do it. From their standpoint, I just think just the kind of the rotations, and I think Evan was just quicker to the basketball in a lot of those. Um, but I think both. I think anytime somebody gets us on the glass, and you go back and watch it's there, there's some times where one guy's just beating the other guy then there's other times if they have to be in help it's really tough to rebound when you're constantly helping so whether that's dribble penetration or digging in on the post or showing on a screen you know now you know it's kind of the unintended consequences of defending some things a certain way is so you might stop them and get them to miss but now you're not in great position to rebound so but i'd have to watch the tape to actually know just the impact no gel had defensive end but yeah. also how he kept finding open guys on <coughs> right. the offensive end and just kind of his overall impact. On yeah, you know, he did a good job uh, of facilitating and, you know, getting assists. And, and then obviously it's, you know, we got a lot of respect for Wieskamp. And then we, we like, you know, that matchup of putting him with his size. A lot of times guys, you know, 6'7", 230 can't move like that. So we just wanted to make it hard for Wieskamp, not let him get post-ups, not let him get in the paint, and uh, just make it difficult and just kind of stick with him. So that's, we wanted to keep – when you saw a subbing like that, that was the reason. Like we want to keep him on Wies Camp and just to keep him down because Garza is such a tough cover, you know. And so Garza is going to score some points. Um, whereas if we can stay with him and Frederick and make it difficult for those guys, now it, it really helps us. Is there anything else? All right. Thank you.